Uh, my name is Paul McKibben, uh, and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, JSON API, uh, particularly J Drupal JSON API and cheap canned beer. Um, why am I even qualified to tell you about this? Uh, well, I've uh, been working on Drupal for a long time, uh, since 2007, around that time. Uh, I run my own single-person Drupal consultancy called TurboJet Technologies here in Atlanta. Um, I've implemented sites since Drupal 5, and I like cheap canned beer. And lately, I've been experimenting with JSON API on my little favorite side project, cheapcannedbeer.com. So cheapcannedbeer.com, the backstory for that. Uh, I was out with my wife at a nice dinner you know, around 2013. And uh, you know, came time to order drinks. She got this nice cocktail. And as usual, I got myself a Schlitz tall boy. And uh, we were joking around about my love for, for things like that. And I thought, you know, I wonder if cheapcanbeer.com is available as a domain. And I looked at it, and it was. So I bought it. And I, I sat on it for a good long time. Uh, two years ago here at Drupal Camp Atlanta, I did a presentation called Drupal Alexa and Cheap Can Beer, where I wrote a, uh, custom, I used the Drupal Alexa module combined with a custom Drupal module to create an Alexa skill and had Drupal as the back end for that skill. Uh, well, since then, I've kind of seen the light that you don't even need custom modules to do this. Uh, now that Drupal has JSON API and core, anything can talk to it. And so uh, this presentation, I'm going to show you how I am using JSON API combined with Amazon uh, Web Service Lambda functions to power a, an Alexa application, Alexa skill uh, for cheap canned beer trivia using trivia questions I pull from cheapcannedbeer.com, a Drupal 8 site. Um, so this is basically what I'm going to demonstrate to you today. Uh, we have cheapcannedbeer.com. Just pure Drupal 8 with a couple of contrib modules in it, no custom code whatsoever, uh, using a core JSON API. The, a Lambda function is going to pull JSON API out of uh, cheapcanbeer.com to pull trivia questions, parse them, clean them up, store them in a bucket in Amazon S3. I've got a second Lambda function that acts as the back end for the Alexa skill that reads the trivia questions from S3 and lets you play trivia. Somebody's got Alexa, it sounds like. I think I triggered something. <laughs> um, any questions about terminology? I've, I've run through things like AWS, S3, Lambda. I'll, I'll go into some of those a little bit more deeply. But uh, if nobody has questions, I will continue. So yeah, the, what I'm going to focus on mostly is the JSON API part. But I will cover the rest of it toward the end. So JSON API, what the heck is it? Uh, Everybody here, here has, have you heard of JSON? And everybody here knows what an API is. So basically, JSON API is a standard for developing machine-to-machine -machine interfaces using JSON. Um, it's uh, available on, I think it's JSONAPI.org. Um, but so what? Well, with Drupal having JSON API in core, it basically enables anything that can speak JSON API to use Drupal content. For example, today I learned in the last hour, Mr. Shane over here uh, in his presentation told me that Gatsby uses JSON API to pull its stuff out of core or out of Drupal. Um, Drupal's strength in this world is content structure and content architecture. And so this really gives you an opportunity to play to Drupal's strengths while letting folks who don't understand Drupal develop applications to take advantage of that structured content. Um, there are some alternatives to JSON API, uh, including uh, GraphQL. Uh, Drupal has a customer uh, contrib GraphQL module. Uh, there's also just the core REST functionality, um, or you could write even custom HTTP functions to uh, return the data you need. But JSON API is extremely powerful, and again, it's, it's out of the box. It works well. Uh, Dries wrote a great blog post about a year ago before JSON API was fully in core. Uh, where he compared REST, JSON API, and uh, GraphQL. I highly recommend reading that sometime just to get his perspective on it. So this is going to be a little hard to read, it looks like. But uh, what, what does a JSON API document look like? It's actually very easy for a human being to read. Um, it has very simple word, you know, links. Uh, links to self, link to the next article, link to the last article. What the, the, the data is the main object. I'll go into that a little bit further. But 
as you can see, everything in here is very easy to read, very easy to understand. You don't need any special tools to, to look at it and understand it. Setting up JSON API on Drupal, very easy. Um, it's in core from 8.7 onward. You just enable it. Uh, it defaults to read only. Um, you can make it uh, so that you can post content to it as well or up update content or delete it. If you do, be careful. Um, there are extra modules that will help you with uh, making sure everything is secure. There's a JSON API extras module to refine what you want to expose. Say you only want to expose your article content type, but you don't want to expose your users or anything else that might be public. You can use JSON API extra just to control that. Um, there's also a module called Entity Access Audit that you can use to see what uh, kind of permissions you have for viewing various entities that Drupal has. And uh, it's another way you can make sure that you're not exposing anything you don't mean to expose. So let's get into cheapcanbeer.com a little bit here. Um, I'm going to get out of the presentation and go into the site. Um, this is a side project, and so being a side project, I haven't had a lot of time on it. Uh, it's not a particularly gorgeous site, but uh, this is what a trivia question looks like to uh, somebody who's viewing it uh, on cheapcanbeer.com. It's got a title. It's got a question. It's got some choices. Uh, it's got an answer. Uh, the answer has an image and uh, an answer description. If you uh, edit this, you can see how the content is structured. Uh, the, the title is basically the Drupal title field. I renamed it summary. Uh, the, this is the body field. I renamed it question. Choices are paragraphs. Um, each paragraph has two fields, the description and whether or not it is the correct answer to the question. So we have, in this one, four choices. We have the description of the correct answer and we have an answer image. Let's go back to the presentation. And uh, just in case I couldn't get into my back end, I had some slides for it. Uh, so anyway, um, here's, what, uh, here's what it looks like in JSON API form. So the main data of a node will have all its fields. It will have its title. Um, there's good for young mothers of the title. It has the body. Um, and actually, the, those fields appear in the data attributes field. Uh, there will also be relationships. Um, the relationships will represent references to other Drupal entities. So you recall there were paragraphs and an image. Those uh, paragraphs and that image will appear under the relationships section of the JSON API document. Uh, there is also an, a section called included, and I'll go into that a little bit more. But uh, when you first query a node in JSON API, it'll tell you what other entities it references, but it won't ac actually give you the fields on those entities unless you explicitly request that they be included. And so you can actually save a bunch of API calls and get all your related entities at once by uh, using the included directive in a parameter. And I'll illustrate that in a moment. Um, so the way JSON API works, once you enable it, the default URL, which is configurable with the JSON API extras module, is slash JSON API. Then you have your entity type, which in our case is node. Then you have the node type, which in our case is trivia question. When you, uh, and I've already gone into this a little bit, but the reference fields need to be included or otherwise you'll only see their IDs. So when you uh, give it this URL, you will see all the trivia questions. Oops, that's not exactly what I wanted to do. Um, let me see if I can get, there it is. without the included, so I can show you what it looks like. 
This is Postman, by the way. Is everybody familiar with this? This is a, a tool that you can use to query APIs and uh, see the results. So when I uh, give it this URL, it gives me all of my trivia question nodes. And you can see they appear under the data section, under attributes. Each uh, data is an array, and each element in the array is one node. So there's a node, you know, good for young mothers. There's the question. There's the correct answer. Here are relationships. Again, um, let's see if we can get to the, yeah, it shows the user, menu link, stuff we're not interested in. There's the answer image. We can see it's a file, but we don't know what the, the URL of the image is. Here are our paragraphs. Again, we see that they're paragraphs. We see their IDs, but we don't see the fields on them. And that's a problem. You know, we don't want to have to make a whole bunch of HTTP requests just to see all that. So uh, we want to use the include directive. And I also want the answer image. And when we do that, again, just one single HTTP request, but now, in addition to what we see in the relationship section, we will see an included section at the bottom. I'm going to have to scroll through a lot here. I apologize. Maybe way down because we're getting all these nodes. And it... All right, but uh, here's an example of something that got included. Here's the, the, one of the paragraphs. We can see that the choice is, in this case is PAPS and that it is the correct answer for the question that it's associated with. It's up to us to cross-reference this ID with the correct ID in the relationship section of the particular node. So it can get a little hairy, which is why I have that one lambda function that parses this JSON file into something a lot simpler. Let's go back to the presentation. Any questions? I know I'm kind of going through a lot real fast here. All right, so uh, again, I have some slides. I got the include parameter here. At the, basically, it, these are backups in case I couldn't demonstrate. Um, so that was JSON API. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how I'm actually pulling the JSON API data and parse it and storing it in S3. All right, uh, and I'm using something called a Lambda function. Uh, does anybody here not know what a lambda function is? Huh? Okay, great. Um, so I won't have to go too uh, deep into that. Um, basically, it's something that Amazon calls serverless, but really what it means is we don't have to worry about the server it's running on. Uh, and then uh, you get, I think, something like a million requests per month for free. So it is practically a free way to run a small uh, task on Amazon. The trivia storage lambda function uh, is triggered by uh, Amazon CloudWatch. This is a, a logging service that also has uh, the ability to issue cron-like events. And so I've got an event defined that triggers this function every three hours and pulls the latest trivia questions from cheapcanbeer.com. Now, why I do it every three hours, I don't know, because I haven't updated those questions since 2017, but we'll save that for later. Um, it pulls out all the important stuff and uh, saves it in a much more uh, simplified JSON object in S3. Um, so after, after it parses all that, remember that JSON API file and how long it was. After it parses it and stores it, this is what the storage looks like. You've, uh, all all the, the title, the question, the correct answer, the choices, the image URL are all together in one place. And a lot easier to parse. If you're interested, this is what the, uh, the Lambda function looks like. Um, you know, these, these things are very easy to edit in line, or if you prefer to develop on your local machine, you can upload a zip file. But literally, um, when the event is triggered, this handler will invoke JSON API on cheapcanbeer.com using the URL I demonstrated earlier gets the result, uh, parses it into a, an actual uh, JavaScript object, 
And then uh, I, you have a, a separate function, which I'll show you in a moment, that will actually create this trivia questions object that gets stored in S3. So here's the, the parser. Um, basically, for each item in the JSON API that got, gets returned, um, it'll parse out the title, the body, which would be the question, the uh, correct answer description. All of these were three fields in the, uh, in the data attributes itself. And then it has to go through all the relationships to find, basically to match the uh, included paragraph with the paragraph ID in the paragraphs field that came in JSON. So you may recall um, let's see if we can find a, an example here. That's the body. Let me go back up to the top. It'll probably be easier. So yeah, um, no type revision. So you get a series of choices in the JSON API. You get the paragraph and an ID. It has to match this ID with the includes down at the bottom. So each of these paragraph included has an ID. You have to, uh, here it is. You have to match that ID with the question ID. Does that make sense, more or less? <laughs> Hope I haven't gotten everybody completely lost. But in any case, that's what this Lambda function does, is basically create the simplified JSON, stores it in S3 so that our trivia question uh, Alexa skill has something simpler to read. It also has a second advantage, is that if the, for some reason the Drupal site goes down, we still have the trivia questions in S3, and the Alexa skill will still remain up. So again, this is what the simplified JSON looks like. It's much easier. All right. So then next we will show the, uh, the skill handler, another Lambda function. And it is actually what handles the interactions between Alexa through the Alexa voice uh, service uh, and the user. So it reads the JSON object from S3. Uh, uses the Alexa Skills Kit to define handlers for uh, the cheap can beer intents and slots. I'll explain those in a second. And it's also written in Node.js. Um, by the way, Lambda, you can write, uh, I think it lets you write in Node.js, Ruby, Python, Go, Java, and I think there are others. I've heard there might be support for PHP now. I'm not sure. Um, so you don't have to write it in Node.js. I just choose to because it's easy. So. For an Alexa skill, you have something called uh, an intent. Uh, and in, in our case, the intent will be play trivia. There's also an invocation name, and for us, it's cheap canned beer. So when you publish a skill on Alexa, you publish an interaction module model that will include that invocation name and an intent. Uh, the intent will also have slots, which will be a variable, you know, like they're variables that fill the intent. For us, it'll be the answer to the trivia question. Um, so, you know, when we uh, invoke the Alexa skill, the user will ask to play trivia. Alexa will respond, here's your question, and it'll use a, a, uh, an illicit slot directive to ask the user to fill in that slot for the answer. The user will provide the answer. Um, Alexa will respond with another request slot to whether you want to play again. Um, and that will either be yes or no. Uh, I'm explaining all this because I'm about to show you the code. Actually, I'll show you the demo first, and then I'll show you the code. So this is the end result. You can actually enable this skill yourself on Alexa now. Oops. How do I turn the volume up? Oh, boy. I may have to hold on a second here. Don't do that. I want the volume. Oops. Okay, this thing keeps popping up. What I really want is to turn up the volume. 
ah, don't do that. Well, I may not be able to show this video because I can't get the volume to turn up. But I can just run it real quick, and you can see the words. Ah. Uh. There we go. That works. It is now. Okay. Well, darn, we can't hear it. But basically, you can see <laughs> that it's asking the question. We will answer the question. It'll respond to the question. And this is the same question that we were showing up on here earlier. So if, uh, <laughs> if anybody's curious. All right. Anyway. So the, uh, I'll show you the code for this. Uh, yes, this is it. So, this uses the Alexa Skills Kit library. ASK is what it is, is uh, Alexa Skills Kit. And what this will do, anytime an Alexa request comes in, oops, why is that happening? There we go. It will uh, check to see if any of these handlers I've defined matches what comes in, and then will invoke one of those handlers to handle the question. So I'm not going to go through all of these different handlers, but the first one I'm going to go through is play trivia start. Basically, that is what will get invoked when somebody asks to play trivia. Um, each of these handlers, this is part of the skills kit definition, has a can handle method. And it returns a Boolean whether this handler can handle the request. So for play trivia, we have to see if the request type is an intent. Like, you know, I'm, I'm invoking this intent. I want to play trivia. The intent name is play trivia. And this you know, intent uses a dialogue. There's some back and forth. I ask you a question, you give me an answer. So the dialogue state, in this case, has to be started. We can't be in the middle of a trivia question or else this can't handle it. So if all these are true, this handler will return true, and it will uh, invoke a, an object in here called Trivia Question Manager with the method AskNextQuestion. So let's see how that works. So lots of code, but none of it is custom Drupal. <laughs> all right. So ask that question, next question. What that will do is check to see if the questions are already initialized, meaning that it's already loaded the, the questions from S3. Um, if it's not, then it will call load and randomize, randomize questions, which is up here. Um, that in turn is called load, load, calls load questions. Is that what it's called? Sorry, load trivia questions. And all that does is get the object out of S3 and uh, parses it into a questions object. So that object that we stored in S3 with the questions and answers is now in here as an object. It'll, once it loads those, it'll put them in random order to ask you. So once it does that, It will uh, call uh, handle ask trivia question, which uh, will actually pick the next question in line and return this, uh, basically a thing for Alexa to speak out and ask you the question. All right, yep, yeah, so uh, it basically pulls us the question from from the, the uh, JSON that we gave it. It speaks it. Uh, the reprompt is basically if you uh, 
wait too long to, a to answer, it'll ask you again. This simple card is basically allows you to display text on a, a screen-enabled Alexa. And then it elicits the answer slot, meaning the next thing we expect from the user is to answer the question. Um, so that makes sense so far? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it took, it took me just like a few hours. Um, yeah, uh, once I put it up for approval, they have some automated tests they run on it. Uh, they do a quick check on it, like, because this is beer related, they, you know, assigned it a mature uh, tag. Um, but uh, it really didn't take very long. They, I think they, they have a 24 hour promise, but it took much less than that. Yeah, yeah, yep. Um, so that's how the, uh, the first uh, handler works, where it asks the question. Uh, once you answer, See if I can find it. What's the name of the handler? Process answer. That's it. So uh, process. There's a process answer handler that will take uh, what the user answered, compare it with the answers that are in the JSON. If it's right, it'll say you got it right. If it's wrong, it will say uh, try again. Um, and then it'll elicit another slot whether you want to continue playing or not. Um, I think I'll probably bore everybody if I go deep into this code, but I'm happy to do that uh, for anybody who wants to. Um, but other than that, does anybody want to see anything else? So we are coming on the end of this, actually. Um, I'll put this back, this slide up one more time to show the whole picture. Oops. There we go. I don't know why this thing won't go, go into presentation mode. Try that again. There, much better. So yeah, one more time. Uh, again, cheapcanbeer.com, Drupal 8 site, no custom modules, only contrib. Uh, JSON API, uh, the Lambda function pulls trivia questions using that, stores a simplified version of the questions in S3. And then the Alexa skill uses what's in S3 to, to play the game. Uh, so takeaways I wanted you to take from this today is that uh, Drupal is very well positioned as an open source uh, content manager for any kind of application, not just a Drupal site. Um, and the JSON API and core has really uh, opened up a whole new world for this. Um, you know, even uh, Shane was showing Gatsby earlier and that Gatsby, all you have to do to enable it basically uh, on the Drupal side is to turn on the JSON API module. Um, one thing, though, is that good content structure is important. You've, I'm sure you've all had clients that have wanted to put everything in the body field and treat things like Microsoft Word. That doesn't lend itself well to something like this. You really want to have your content structured in a way that you know the difference between a question and an answer, an image versus something else. Um, so the better your content structure, the more likely you can open up uh, your content to be used by other applications. Um, any other questions? Can you go back uh, to your first set of bullet points for your first language? The first set of bullet points, which one? Oh. Go back. All right. So that's still being for the second. Yes. Okay, yeah, or is the first one that we Oh, the first one. So the, the storage service? Yeah. This one? Yeah. 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 So yeah, CloudWatch, uh, I've got an event defined every three, hours, that'll, every three hours, it'll request this Lambda function to pull questions from the site. So in case I change them or add new questions, it'll pull the latest ones. And I can also go in and trigger it manually. Any other questions? Well, um, you all get uh, extra 20, 30 minutes uh, to, to do what you want. Thank you very much for uh, coming. <laughs>